Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew discusses commander-related topics, and today we are going to be ranking the most popular card draw spells in Commander in a handy-dandy tier list. And joining me for this ranking, as usual, is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How's it going, Seth? I'm doing well, Tomer. How are you? Welcome back. Uh, hopefully you had a good, uh, a good little break there for a couple weeks. Heck yeah, I had a great time. For those who, who are listening right now, I, I was in Paris for two weeks. Super long vacation, super recharged. I'm back here today, super jet lagged, um, but uh, really excited to be back and, and joining you all. So yeah. Um, next up, as always, we got Krim, aka the Asian Avenger, aka the Sweaty Avenger. How's it going, Krim? Uh, it's really hot. My internet might cut out. You know, great as usual. Just such a sunny socal heat wave stuff it's so hot in my room yeah you're currently experiencing an unprecedented heat wave it's like the hottest ever been in the area yeah. right it's great it's great i love it i love it so the point it's where great. like internet and ac and stuff is being intermittently cut rolling blackouts are like the cool thing to do Ugh. so you know we're doing that down here it's pretty cool cool or hot it's definitely hot <laughs> <laughs> i'm like 90 well. percent sweat right now well, hopefully, hopefully it uh, cools down tomorrow. <laughs> that's that's the the hope because we're recording it on a Friday. Um, yeah, yeah. Oof. And um, in in the not so hot area, but still quite hot because there's no AC. AKA is is Bruce Kitchen, aka Phil. How's it going, Phil? Hey y'all. It's actually really not hot. Like today, it rained multiple times, and I actually went out with a jacket. So. Ooh. Becoming more European, European again. The weather here uh, actually quite refreshing after this heat wave. It's that's actually great. I mean, I say that now, but the rest of the year will be dark and cold. <laughs> all right, with all that out of the way, we're going to be start talking about the most popular uh, card draw spells in Commander and how we're going to rate them. Um, they're according to EDH Rec. If you want to find our full list, we talked about, we covered at least 44 cards and we ranked all of them. So there's going to be a link in the article, the MTG Goldfish article. If you go to mtggoldfish.com, you can find uh, the article and there's going to be the image posted over there. Uh, but we just decided to talk about like the ones that we felt of those are the most interesting because we can't talk about 44 cards in the span of like an hour-ish podcast so we're just gonna we picked like 12 or so that we thought were the most discussion worthy the ones that we have the most to talk about and we're gonna go from there and honestly like we agree on a lot of them like what's the point yeah. of talking about ristic study when everyone knows it's good what are we gonna say like yeah it's good everyone yeah. knows it's good you know it's good i know it's good we all know it's good Ed. like so yeah we tried to pick yeah. ones that might be interesting to actually have a conversation about too yeah, Rhystic Study, we gave all S's all around. And actually, that's a good segue to mention what our rating ske- uh, system is because, um, you know, we, we got to have a ranking scheme or else it doesn't really make sense. So at D, you're actively looking to cut this card from your deck. You're hoping to discard to gamble. We never want to run these cards. At C, these are average cards. These are basically mediocre filler cards. We're not going to run them usually in decks, but if we have a certain restriction, such as a budget restriction, they're going to make the cut over the higher ranking cards card draw spells that we generally want to be running. B are cards that are only good in certain decks. These are good in a small percentage of decks. And these can be auto-includes in certain archetypes. For example, uh, Archmage Emeritus, we would all consider very good in a spell slinger deck because it draws cards very efficiently off every instant sorcery cast. However, you're not going to jam it in let's say, a creature tribal deck that has blue in it, right? So it's not like a a multi-format. It's not a a format staple. It's an archetype staple. So that would be a B for us. Then moving to A, this is really good overall. We'll put put it in a large percentage of decks. So we're not going to put it in every single deck, but it's going to be a high performer in most decks, and we're going to be running it a lot. And then finally at S, these are auto-includes in all decks. We're basically, we're going to put it, like, if we're in the color to run this card, we're going to be running this card, and we're going to have to have a good reason not to run this card. So, for example, we said uh, Rhystic Study is S's all around. So if we're putting just in terms of power level, if we're looking at just, like, what would make our deck better, if our deck has blue, we're going to put Rhystic Study in it, and we have to have a reason beyond power level for why we wouldn't want to run. Maybe flavor reasons or, or fun reasons or something like that uh, but that's out of the scope of this ranking all right so with that ranking scheme huh 
Is it is the scale in Fahrenheit or Celsius? I wasn't clear on that. <laughs> Whatever will make our viewers happier. Uh, okay. So if you're if you're if you uh, use Celsius, then just imagine it's in Celsius. If you're in Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, uh, but you're wrong. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> Good for you, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we just keep losing stuff. So I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Seth, kick things off. Uh, with the first card you want to discuss in terms of card draw spells. Ooh, so this is this is an interesting one. I'm very curious how people have this one ranked. And that card is Jessica's Will. Jessica's Will, you probably know it's from Commander Legends. Three minutes or three. You choose one if you got your commander. Choose both. You get to add red mana equal to the number of cards in an opponent's hand. Or you exile the top three cards of your library and you can play them that turn. So that's the, the card advantage aspect. As far as our actual tier rankings, I gave it an S. Uh... Phil and uh, Tomer gave it A's. Krim gave it a B. Uh, So we kind of kind of a mix there from like, "Eh, it's okay. I'll play it sometimes to ultra stable played in every deck. I consider this to be a card that I really will play in every single deck, like from mono rad up to five colors. It offers so much value. Like the card draw mode is good. The ramp mode is actually pretty effective a lot of the time. And if you have your commander and get both of them, you have a really, really huge turn. So I don't know. What am I what am I missing here? Am I overrating <laughs> Jessica's will? Is it not actually as as good as the S ranking I gave it? I think you're probably right, and I'm severely underrating that card. Uh, I'm actually going to put that right up to an oh. S right now. Oh, that was easy. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Uh, Winning. Uh, because <laughs> It's true, though, right? Like, I mean, it is just one of the most absolutely cracked cards that you could have uh, when it comes to just if you have red mana, why wouldn't you want this? Like, I just don't see why you you, if you use red mana at all, this is always like valuable. You combine it with your commander out on the board and you just get so much value. So this card, I I was severely underrating it uh, at B. Um, so that that's pretty straightforward. Oh. I, th- oh. I see, I see, Phil I see up to another an S too. person moving <laughs> Phil, yes. what, what's, what's going on there? <laughs> I, I usually don't play the card, but I kind of don't play it because it's just too much power with not too much synergy. So I think you know, it's kind of easy mode. Mm. But yeah, you should. I mean, if you have a copy of it, you should probably play it. So yeah, yeah. I guess it's an S. Mm. <laughs> It's, See, I'm just Tomer. Come on, come on, Tomer. Give me the, mm. give me that, Tomer. I was, so Make it I'm, unanimous. So I put it as A, but I was almost about to move it to B, and I kind of want to move it to B right now. Ooh, really? What do you not like about it? Interesting. So I, I love the card. I think it's one of the best uh, card draw spells in Ren, and and it's really good in like two color decks. However, I think if you just view it as like one mode, the mode that is draw cards, pay three mana, draw three cards, but you can only play them. Uh, that that turn that you cast it, then I don't think it's it's is like that amazing. It's good, but it's not amazing because oftentimes, like if you if you cast it like on turn three or something, uh, you're not going to get any of those cards really. Like maybe you'll play a land if you missed a land drop or something like that. Um, you really want to have you really want to cast it and then cast all the spells off it. And for that, you need to have your commander on the battlefield. So number one and number two. You need to use that. You you need to have that red mana that you're generating off it to actually cast those spells, or else again you're not going to be able to really utilize this card. And for me, that means I'm going to run it in mono color, mono red decks. Obviously, every single one is a staple. Two color decks, I think, are going to utilize that red mana very reliably. Three color decks, it's going to be a lot harder. But four and five, I just wouldn't run this card like there's there how many how many uh spells i'm going to be casting that require a lot of red pips like if i can't if i can't use the three cards that i i cast off it then i i think it's bad so i wouldn't run it in four color or five color and then that makes me think maybe is that is that just a b um and i'm gonna put it as a b I, I think is that B. for I the low cost, to an <laughs> the cost of it being three mana is so low yeah that I don't think that it's actually, like, even noticeable if you can't use those cards. Like, in those situations, I would still just use that red mana to spend towards putting it towards my commander tax or something. Uh, Like, I I just feel like there's always something you can do with this card so far. Sure, but... Isn't that pretty bad, though, if you don't have your commander? Yeah. If you don't have your commander, sure. It's it's, like... 
it's still okay, so, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, uh, so I, mean, I agree with you good. that just mm-hmm. the card draw mode isn't that isn't that great. If that's all the card was, because we actually have that's a card that exists, uh, Act on Impulse, which is literally just the card draw mode. Everything else is exactly the same, uh, and that sees playing zero percent of decks, uh, rightly in Commander, but. You're not just getting the card draw mode. Like, you're getting this, like, oh, it's turn three. Someone has seven cards in hand. Oh, I just cast this and drop, like, a six or seven drop and, like, run away with the game on top of the card advantage. So there's just, like, so much flexibility built into it. So I guess, like, maybe it's cheating. When I added this to the list, I was the one that added Jessica's will to the list. I was wondering Mm -hmm. if it was a little too cheaty for card draw because technically you're, like, not drawing a card and a big part of its power does come from its flexibility and the ritual aspect of it but i think just like overall as a card if i was gonna like discount that we're talking about card row in specific i still consider it a an s tier commander staple that i would play in basically every deck and the one part i disagreed with with uh, what you said tomer is like i don't think the five color thing's that big of a deal like yeah if you're trying to cast literal like joda or something that's five different colors it's not great but really like spend it on your generic cost even in a five color deck your things are probably going to have like a decent amount of generic mana symbols so i don't know i don't know if i've ever cast a jessica's well i've been like oh i i can't use the seven mana what else is this is a bad card like i just don't think it's ever actually happened in practice but (laughs) have you actually put in five color decks like I would never even consider putting Jessica's Will in a five color deck in, because mm, you're not in a really dragon deck. I played in my five color dragon deck. It makes sense there. It's easy. In Ur dragons are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't. Well, once you got the Ur dragon on the wax. battlefield. <laughs> no, 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 no. Five color. Ur, uh, five color dragon. Deck. I was about to say Ur dragon because that's the only thing I associate. <laughs> Morophon. Because I have the judge problem, so that's why I just do that. Okay, okay. All right, all right. But like, but flex like, but like, over r- here, geez. but like, not not even using like Morophon, right? Like the thing is, just I I've enjoyed it just to play my dragons and the excess red mana sure. is just good towards the generic. So I don't know. I mean, I haven't really found it to be all that problematic. So I mean, I I've enjoyed it. Unless yeah, I'm casting he... ultimatums. If you're playing ultimatum tribal, then <laughs> sure. probably not going to want this. I think the problem with this is the timing when you cast it. Like, the good thing about Jessica's Will is that it can ramp you pretty early. Like, if you play Mono Red and you play 2-drop, 3-drop off of it, that is pretty good on turn 3 or whatever, if you have a 2-mana commander or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if you want to play Dragons with it and use the red mana for the generic costs, then it's like a late-game spell. But you then also have people... artifacts. Yeah, sure, but you got to have some extra mana then. So I guess if you want to... I wouldn't play it in more than three colors. I don't think I've played it in three colors yet, but I guess there's a there's an argument just because of the raw power of the card. But yeah, the easier... Or the more you can use the red mana to fully cast spells, the better it gets because it's actually pretty good in the early game, right? It, it, people still have cards in hand and it, it's just better early, which is not... Mm-hmm what you would expect from a powerful effect like this but it's actually and plus it's great against the phil meta because phil always has like every reliquary (laughs) tower and like 20 cards in hand so you just y'all boy you get so much value out of it in our uh (laughs) in our play group i mean we've seen some crazy turns with jessica's will right it's just always the start of something completely broken (laughs) yeah I'll, i'll switch it back to an a i do think like if you play it on turn three and somebody has like seven cards in hand and you don't have your commander out, just using it as a ritual is probably good enough. You pay three mana, you generate you generate seven, so you're netting four mana. That's like better than most ritual effects. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, there have been times where like I generate some mana, um, I cast like one of the two spells that I flipped and and whatever, and it's not been that great. And you do need your commander out for to get maximum value out of it. I don't think you you sold me on on five color four color decks though. Like yeah, dragons I understand because there's going to be a lot of like colorless pips. But like if I'm running like Joda or like Sliver Queen or something like that, like I don't know how many how how, how much am I going to actually use that red mana on? Um, Although, I don't know. Wait, now that I think about it, is usually you cast like one card off of it, right? But and then you can, play, not a you can card play lands draw. off it too, right? Like, ah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. You can but play like, lands if you just get yeah. one card, it's not technically not card good. draw since it's a card itself. So, yeah. 
Yeah, if you I were mean, only looking at one mode, it set. wouldn't be a good card, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it would be just like uh, act on impulse or like I don't know, one of the other thingies. So it's like it's it's good. the fact that it does both is what really puts yeah. it. And I I do agree with set that I don't think it's cheating because I think if you ask the average viewer, like you even leave a comment section as well, like I think most people would consider this card draw. So if people consider a card draw, I think it's worth mentioning it here. Yeah. Can't be picky in mono red as well. <laughs> like it's yeah. the oh, best yeah. card draw in there. Yeah, yeah no, red wouldn't true. have like any card draw if you didn't count impulse style <laughs> draws because that's just like how red draws. Yeah. I guess outside of wheel effects, really. But yeah, yeah, that is true. All right, we'll move on from Jessica's will to Krim. Your first pick. So my first pick uh, is stinging study. So it's four and a black instant. You draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. Pretty straightforward, just five mana instant speed. I would lose, like, a good chunk of life. I, <laughs> If you look at a majority of the commanders that are, like, let's just go with, like, EDH rec. You look at the top row uh, of anything that has black in its mana costs. You're looking about probably about, on average, like, at least four mana, right? Maybe even more of the most popular uh, commanders. I think this card, if I would pay five mana to draw four cards, lose four at instant speed. Anything beyond that, it's even better. So at first I had this, I was like, okay, well, is this only in specific decks? But then like I realized, I think that I moved it up to an A and it's like just on the cusp of like almost reaching S because it's only one black pip. So it's not like it's like asking you to go triple, quadruple, double black or anything like that, right? It's not like a sign in blood. It's pretty easy to cast. And when everything is at least four mana, I would gladly pay five mana instant speed to lose four and draw four. I think this card is really, really good. I mean, I it's think not it's not on MTGO, good. right? Uh, no. That's unless they recently Wait, did they added add it. it? I don't, yeah, I'm, not I sure if it, I'm not sure if it just made the cut I'm or checking not. right now. I I will. Uh, no. No, it is no! still not been okay. added. So, okay, because I mean, sad. I have it in my paper decks. And obviously yeah. in my Xander deck, like, yeah, like, lo- Ooh, lose seven, yeah. draw seven. Right. I'm, instant I'm the speed? I didn't instant see that. Instant speed. I mean, that's... So you don't have... Speed. You get around, like, that discard thing, right? Like, if it was sorcery speed, right. and you draw, like, six or something like that, and you spent five mana to do that, like, you're going to probably discard a lot of cards. Right. But the fact that it's instant means oof, you get a full turn of all those cards. And that is why I really love this card. And, like, we all know that, uh, like, I think everyone at this pod is willing to pretty much lose all but one life to draw a card, right? So, <laughs> that is uh, true. like, that, uh, that's why I think this card is just a complete powerhouse. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I love this card. It's instant yeah. speed. Just, I will dome myself for like nine and not care, like, and wonder how I died. Doesn't matter. I drew nine <laughs> cards. So, like, as long as your commander is in black and at least four mana, I think this is worth it in your deck. Now, that that does, would that fall under belongs in some decks? Because that's why I bring this up, because a majority of these, like, the color black, right, commanders that are mm-hmm. good and popular on rec are at least four plus. Mm-hmm. So, just say at its lowest, at its floor, would you pay five mana, lose four, draw four? Instant I, speed? Uh, yeah, it's Probably. Speed. Mm-hmm. War is like right on. That's 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 the one I'm not sure about. Five, yes, for sure. I'm in. Four is mm-hmm. where I'm kind of like, because I think like I know it's instant speed, but I think like promise of power is just like draw five for five, and I've played that many sorcery. times in the past. It is a also, sorcery, a lot harder to cast. That's true, mm-hmm. but if I'm only drawing four, is it worth it? Would I rather have but a think about this skeletal scrying or like some of the, like some of the other oh. like. <laughs> Do we like, not play like that the, anymore? <laughs> is that, I mean, skeletal a skeletal scrying, scrying is, is, is a bit wild. It's a bit mm-hmm. wild. But, uh, like, I don't know. I mean, like, I think I also like that this can just go into a five-color commander deck. Yeah. Like, it, it's just... Mm-hmm. It is flashable. So, uh, it's only one black clip. And I think it also depends on, like, how much being instant speed matters to you. I, I could see this going way up in value for Krim decks, because your decks yeah. really value leaving your mana up. If I'm yeah. playing one of my, like, Panormonicon-style decks, where I'm, like, tapping out during my turn every turn anyway, and that's what my deck's doing, then, like, instant speed isn't that much of an upside, as weird as that sounds. Like, it still is an upside, but if you're not really trying to play at instant speed, it's less of an upside than a Drago deck or a Flash deck, where you're, like, constantly trying to play instant speed. 
So I don't I, know. I, I, I don't know. I think you're undervaluing. I I don't think instant speed only matters in Drago. That's the main thing. Like I, it's good at all times, right? Because in a four player game, being able to get the most information, right, and then like seeing like you know when like when is a good window to cast it. I don't want to get notion thief. I don't want to get counterspelled. Or maybe <laughs> this is something I would cast into a counter spell to draw out the counter right like b- being able to cast it at any point is always valuable i don't think it matters if you're drago or not obviously it helps if you're drago but like yeah. i think i would still want it in the same like because like my xander deck is a tap out deck right it's not mm-hmm. drago and in that deck i still love having instant speed i mean i think that's it, true but you don't there's have to also seven that's, mana like yeah. that's a that's yeah. an easy one when you got a seven mana commander like that's sure ooh, sure cool super auto include there four is what the what do you guys think about four because mm-hmm. when i was ranking like, this all the rest of us gave it b's and my thinking was three or less mana i would not play this period no matter what sure. if my commander is three or less mana if it's four mana I'm not really sure. Maybe depends on the deck. Five plus mana, auto include every time. And that led to me giving it a, a B, which is really good in some decks. I don't know. What do you guys think about four mana? Is this worth it with four mana value commanders? Because that's the one I really haven't figured out yet. Yeah. And that's on the, the average edge for me. is four. The average is like <laughs> probably looking at four when you look at the popular commanders with black. Just saying. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, looking. I, <clears throat> go ahead. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. I had to get something out of my throat there anyways mm. uh i bumped it up to an a because the instant speed is actually like that is very good sure it doesn't really work like i play i love playing Jada, uh, for example as a commander that doesn't really do much yeah but if you play lord xander you draw seven you do have to discard uh, if you play it main right. phase so yeah i guess I mean, it's a good question with our rating system if half of the commanders don't work with it if we make the cut at four. And I... four is kind of on the line. Like, five mm-hmm. is sweet, and obviously everything more is just... We, I think we're thinking insane. half, but, like, like four-plus commanders in black? Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. I, and they're and all, like, if you look that, at yeah. the popular ones, they are they are... You know, it's not like, oh, some fringe, you know, niche commander. Like, on average, a good amount of them are pretty popular, right? You look at Moldratha, well, Yarok, you move oh, yeah. Tassiger, you move across the board, right? Edgar yeah. Markov, it, Kalia, right? Like, even Queen Ooh, Marchesa, Tassiger, these are four great. drops, yeah. right? So, yeah. I think... I think- the- the reason four is so important is that is a popular number too, though. Like if you just look at the most mm-hmm. popular commanders, that's like Atroxa, Lathril, Prosper, Wilhel, Kalia. That's a lot of four mana value popular black commanders. So I think that's why four is such a big, big question for me because that's the decks I'm trying to figure out if it's worth playing in. But sorry, Tomra, in interrupting you. Uh, my my take on it is like I very much agree with uh, Phil. Like the fact that it, like Phil and, and Krim, like the fact that it's it's instant speed is what sells it for me. If it was sorcery speed, I'd probably put this as a, like a maybe a B, a low B though, because spending five mana to draw cards and then discarding seems really bad to me. Like five mana is a lot. Like I don't really want to be drawing cards at sorcery speed for five mana and like essentially tapping out to do that. Um, but the fact that like yeah, yeah, it's it's good for draw go, but I think it's it's essential for even like a tap out deck because you want to spend that five mana um, on the end step before your turn. You get more information and all that stuff, but like, the main thing is that you spent that five mana, so you spent most of your res- your mana resources um, to cast a spell, and then you have then you untap and you have a full turn to actually utilize the spells the the, the cards you just drew, as opposed to like drawing like four or five or something like that then going down to discarding your hand and also your opponents now saw you draw a bunch of cards too so now they have you on the radar so like at least this way you can instant speed uh get that value utilize all that value on your next turn and your opponents don't really have that much time to respond to you as well before you get to to like deploy the cards that you got so i think that's like super important um that's why i think it's like at least a b for me and then, yeah, I think there are, like, a lot of uh, commanders that are four or higher that this is really good. Obviously, three, that's the cutoff. Like, it, it, under four, under four, 
No. At four, I would actually comp- I would I would at four I would say like I won't always run this because sometimes there's more thematic options or something that I'd rather run or more synergistic options that I'd rather run. At five or higher, like I'm always gonna be running this card because it's really, really good. And it's only one black pip, so it's so splashable. Like I'll put this in a five color deck. It's like the best card draw in my Ur Dragon uh deck. Even though it's not thematic and I'm looking to maybe cut it. Uh, What's but like, the, how is it not thematic, right? It's, got it's a you draw nine cards for five mana at instant speed. It's it's so stupid. That's so, <laughs> it's so sick. Stupid. Yeah, it's so, yeah, it's so sick. Yeah, it is. I mean, I I think at its floor, I love it. At yeah. its floor, I love it, right? Because I'm assuming four. I'm not going any lower mm-hmm. than that. I'm not playing. So, at its floor, I love it. Yeah. I don't know. This is a really good card, and I think I think. I, I desperately want this online. Like, I mean, can, the can't believe we haven't had the opportunity it, to cast this on Commander Clash yet. Ugh, and it doesn't so even good. seem that hard. I don't know why no. why they would not put this one on there because it's not like it's some super complicated card. <laughs> it's just because nobody yeah. broke it in Legacy or Popper. Yeah. That's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, against the odds, stinking studies, uh, please. <laughs> I have to do in paper, a paper against the odds to get them to add it. Oh boy, that sounds like a lot of work. I'll, I'll see what the I can do. The, odds I, is is the hard Seth part shuffling his yeah. own deck and not having it explode everywhere. Yeah. That's the against the odds. That's, the There's hard part to get this good in Legacy is that you don't have a creature in the com, uh, commander in the command zone. So five so first, mana lose nothing, but draw nothing. Lose nothing. <laughs> yeah, you lose wow, no life, the value. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, we'll move on. Phil, what do you got for a top? Uh, one of the top picks that you think is worthy of good discussion? Um, I've got a planeswalker actually, Liliana Dreadhorde General. I've got her at an A. Seth and Krim have her at C, and Toma at B. Um, I'd say you just draw more cards with it than you would think because she draws a lot of aggression but then you have this at least the zombie she creates unless you edict double edict the table then creatures die anyways like whenever a creature dies you draw a card should have probably said this it's also six mana creates zombies does a lot of things but the card draw is very it gets out of hand like if the table can't really do anything about it usually a black deck has creatures dying and she just draws a lot of cards produces creatures that draw. Cards. It's just, it's just a pretty solid planeswalker, and that is saying something in Commander. Mm-hmm. I'd say she's probably one of the strongest one in the format, and she draws cards. It's interesting that we are so divisive on this, and I also I always assume like Krim is like the the black sacrifice planeswalker type lover, and he gave it a C. A I see. Uh, Unless I'm Liliana Tribal or a Super Friends deck, mm-hmm. I'm I am not in love with anything that's attached to a Planeswalker in my deck. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I and then on top of that, for six mana, that is steep. That is real steep. In a in a black deck that has tons of efficient ways to get cards pretty easily, uh I, I don't I don't think I would want to have it attached to a planeswalker. I like the edict. I think the edict is nice, but again, Black has tons of more efficient ways to do that at a cheaper cost. So I, I just... And yeah, maybe they don't have it attached to a card draw. But, like, I think Black can do all of that a lot easier. Like, just example, like, one card prior. The Stinging Study thing. I love drawing... Just paying five mana, right? Instant speed. I get a draw. I I like Liliana's versatility. I will mm-hmm. admit that. Like, she is card draw. She is an edict. But other than that, like... I. Let's say I, I oftentimes I've tried Liliana in a non Super Friends deck. It's like I pay six mana, I get a zombie, I block with it, I draw a card, and she dies. Like that's that's but, what mm, happens. You, know, you don't play in Super Friends. You play in in sacrifice decks like Jada and whatever Corvals or something. That just well, draws I, but, but, uh, so many cards. I actually think she's better in a Super Friends deck wow, than a, like a what? like a sacrifice deck. Yeah, because then the rest of the Super Friends also poop out little tokens, right? So, it, like, sure. in a mono black deck, a Jadar deck, I assume any Aristocrats deck, they're not mm-hmm. exactly looking to sink six mana into this. I think they I can ever. get everything that's attached to Lily for a lot easier 
and a lot less fragile body. The drawing for Tolkien. Just, just let me. Sorry to interrupt you there, oh, but drawing for Tolkien's dying is you can get it with like morbid opportunist once each turn, but drawing for Tolkien's is actually not that common. Like Grim House, mm -hmm. uh, Harris Pax, and all they specifically name non-Tolkien. And sure. sacrificing tokens is pretty easy. But yeah, six mm -hmm. mana is obviously a lot, but I don't I ramp in the first turn, so I can <laughs> slam down that six, Liliana. Six oh, mana. Yeah. Six mana is nothing to fail. Phil's got six mana yeah, after yeah. three. <laughs> He's always got the soul ring. <laughs> we we got, we got to evaluate it. Yeah. The people that don't have turn one soul ring. Yeah, we yeah. got to evaluate uh, it in the context like of steep. <laughs> always having turn one soul ring. I mean, my issue is the cost, too. Like, yeah. when it comes, I, even in Aristocrats decks, I gave it a C. Even though I think that it's a good card, potentially it's a fine card in Aristocrats decks, but I find when I build most Aristocrats decks, I tend to go with the three mana versions. There's just so many Midnight mm -hmm. Reapers and Grimhara Spexes and Mortar Bit Opportunists. Unless I'm playing like Jadar or something where like the non token clause is like specifically relevant to what I'm trying to do. I don't think the the rest of Liliana gives me enough upside to make me want to pay twice as much mana compared to like a Midnight Reaper. Because usually I'm trying to like combo off. You're like you got your Grave Crawler and you're going infinite and drawing your deck or something. And in those contexts, I think that just like valuing efficiency is more important than the overall power of the card when you're playing a synergy deck. Mm. So that's that's kind of where I come from with my C ranking on Liliana. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's efficient enough to keep up with the other options in most decks i'm i'm actually with phil uh i actually like this a lot and i i wouldn't really run it in, in planeswalker decks um because i don't know i feel like there's higher better top ends for i guess you're using it primarily as removal in that regard well, um, no, but you're like you're constantly you're wiping cards. the board you're yeah all constant so you're you're yeah. you don't care when stuff dies so like whatever yeah yeah, I think I think it's it's pretty solid there, but like I really like it in sacrifice sucks. Um because I, I I do think a lot of sacrifice sucks have a lot of tokens that you want to be sacrificing. Like Jadar is we, we mentioned Jadar, but I think that's like a staple in like all sacrifice decks. And there's like uh oof. there's like there's there's like the Senjir Autocrat or something like that that makes tokens like so I, I always associate token making with sacrifice. Um, so being able to draw cards off your tokens, I think, is very good. Um, when we're talking about like, three drops that do similar things, like Grim Horror Specs is one for only uh, non-tokens. Midnight Reaper, Reaper is one for non-tokens. Morbid Opportunist is uh, it counts tokens, but only once per turn. Um, there's Species Specialist, which I think is pretty good if you're in a tribal deck. It's at four, but you have to, you only draw cards when a specific type of creature dies, like a car, uh, creature type. Um, I think the closest analog is probably Dark Prophecy. It's a three mana enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. I think all of these are, I think Dark Prophecy is very, very good as well. Uh, especially if you're on like the token side of things, and uh, the only the only difference is like a lot of these require you to lose life when you're doing it. So if you're going infinite or something like that, then dying is actually uh, a concern. If you're just losing two life or one life each time that's happening, and that that's kind of a concern. Whereas this one doesn't. But I like the fact that like this is like a draw engine, but also a mini board wipe. And I really value that. Like, I love, I love tying the two together. Anywhere I can get extra interaction pieces with my value engine, with my ramp or whatever that, like, I start to value it much higher. And that's what Liliana does. Like, you turn, you drop her for six mana, which is a lot, but you sacrifice some, you make your opponent sacrifice the, the creatures they don't want to sacrifice nine times out of ten. You're drawing cards. At the same time, and your opponents now have to deal with it. But guess what? They're down two creatures. So how are they going to be dealing with it that efficiently? Like she does kind of protect herself in that regard. And if you get to untap with her, um, that's really good. You're in a really good position at that point because you're going to be drawing even more cards. You're going to make even more blockers and all that stuff. So I don't know. Like if I'm in a sacrifice deck, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't run her. So that's why I gave her a solid B. Is the, edict, me. <clears throat> is the edict mode even that powerful though i don't know i'm Sack i'm naturally creatures? i'm naturally an edict skeptic because as, as we were talking about how many tokens there are floating around in commander like aren't you just going to be getting your opponent's jadar token and land elves on turn six and you're like yeah yeah i got him like that was sweet like for well, six if she's your only creature removal, then you'll feel bad. But like, I'm assuming you're going to be riding her alongside your regular suite of board wipes and stuff. 
Especially if you're counting her as card draw. I mean, I mean, and like, like not every deck I, is a token deck. I'm a huge edict fanatic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, yeah. you know this already. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I, I enjoy my edicts, but Lily. I don't know. It, unless it's like board wipe heavy deck where mm-hmm. I know that at best if like uh, like if I'm being generous uh, my opponents will have like like two creatures, right? Then okay, sure. The minus I know it'll most of the time just sweep the board essentially. But like I other than that, I mean, I I don't think she's worth it. Oof. That hurts me. I mean, me. I got to I got to go with Krim. <laughs> Krim is the edict master. If Krim says an edict <laughs> isn't good, then I'm going to I'm just going to trust Krim on that one. <laughs> Cuz he she's loves not as easy to anyone. loop. Yeah, like she's not as easy to loop as like a flesh bag marauder, right? Like <laughs> I can loop that like a thousand times over faster than I could like a lily. Not being a creature makes her definitely a lot right. worse, but I don't know. I still like I, I still like the combination of both. I think she's fair for 6 mana. I would run her own and like most sacrifice sex. That's the problem. She's fair for six mana. <laughs> Oof. 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 All right. Well, fine. We'll move on to my first pick in terms of contentious cards. Was it contentious actually? I don't even know. But here's a card that I just like stopped running. And then I, every single time I see it, it's like really good. And I'm like, should I be running this more? It's a uh, consecrated sphinx. For those who don't know consecrated sphinx, um, loading. Blip. <laughs> I don't know Consecrated Sphinx, man. <laughs> no, it's like a six mana... Ah, what's the, the frick? Um, all right, there we go. Six mana, uh, four in double blue, uh, four six flying Sphinx. Not a Phyrexian Sphinx. I'm still upset about that. It should be Phyrexian um, once they did the great Phyrexian errata. Uh, whenever an opponent draws two cards, you may draw two cards. So the way this usually works is you play it on your turn or whatever and then every single turn cycle you're drawing a minimum of like what six cards because you pass it to your opponent's turn their draw phase they draw one card you draw two then the next person's turn they draw one they draw you draw two the next person's turn they draw one they draw two if your opponents can't deal with it like immediately you're you're drowning in card advantage. And that's not counting the extra card draw that they're going to be drawing. Like, if they draw more than one card per turn, you're going to be swimming in card draw. And it's a creature, so you can reanimate it. You can cast it for less than six mana, too. Um, and in terms of ratings, uh, Phil put it highest, ranked it highest at an S, and I think that makes sense because he, I think he's run it the most out of all of us. Um, recently, at least. Seth and, and I run it, uh, put it as A- but Krim, Krim is not as hot with it. He puts it as B. So I, I want to hear from Phil first because I feel like Phil has been running it the most in Commander yeah, Clash recently, and I've I? always been most impressed. I think so. Like I sometimes run it, like I ran it in Sphinx Tribal, but I think the card is actually Ristic Study is better because it's cheaper. But I think it's the second most absurd card draw engine like whenever it doesn't get killed right away the player just draws like 20 cards or something like not even Mm -hmm. overstating it like it's usually way like too much uh i used to sometimes run it just to power up some janky decks but yeah it's usually around the wow you should probably not it's like jessica's will like yeah, you can play it in every deck, and it's great in every deck. I mean, it's an S for me, but it's almost too good. And you become the villain of the table. That is that is actually a problem with this, because if you drop it, everybody's going to say, well, we got to either kill this or kill Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually what I was going to say about this card. I think that's actually, like, the biggest drawback of it. It's incredibly yeah, powerful. Probably. If it sticks out, you draw so many cards, you probably win the game. But it comes down pretty late compared to Ristic Study since it's six mana. So people sometimes mm-hmm. have a board and so forth at that point, and you slam your Sphinx, and they're like, oh, no, none of us have a removal spell. Well, I guess we just all slam our creatures at Phil until he ties, or else he's going to kill us with all these cards he's drawing. So I think the, the arch enemy mode of Sphinx is actually, like, a vote against it in my opinion i still haven't ranked as an a because it is i i think i agree with phil as far as just like card draw that can take over a game it probably is second touristic study in blue is just as far as the absurd amount of advantage it can generate but i think it does come with risk because sometimes it leads to the the player removal thing if no one can <laughs> remove the sphinx itself that is exactly why i have it at a p <laughs> 
And when I say for specific decks, specific decks that can handle immediately becoming the arch enemy, mm-hmm. right? Like, cause like that is the main issue. I've played this. I've played this since you know I've I started in Commander, right? Like I always thought it was a blue, like you know, like a blue staple. powerhouse when it came to draw. Yeah, like it is a blue staple, but because of that exact reason, where every time I played it, I've immediately died. <laughs> uh, like I, I've, I've just, it's not even like there's no politicking that you're gonna do with a consecrated sphinx. No one cares, right? They, so, they're gonna kill you. So, uh, Rhystic uh, Study I, is a B as well by that logic. No, Rhystic Study though doesn't co- like the thing here is Rhystic Study is three mana. It's pretty often mm-hmm. easily removed. Uh, and like so, like I, I found that, that it is. I find uh, people, is I've like... found, <laughs> I have found people will remove. There are more ways to that. Just have destroy an enchantment, an artifact, or whatever attached to card design nowadays. I feel like most enchantments and artifacts are immediately dealt with whenever needed. I don't know like why, but it feels like it's a lot like the modern take, right? You would play the uh, Magus of the Moon over the Blood Moon. Right, because now it's easier when everyone is playing Besaju's, right? So things like that, and I feel like everything nowadays has the attached kill an enchantment, not so much a four six flyer. So I like that way. What more. about black that, decks I, and red decks and rack? Black decks, decks have okay. Rack decks have will probably the one just, feed the swarm. <laughs> fair, <laughs> I, and then all is dust, Ugin, and all that other stuff too. But that gets rid of creatures too. That's fair. That's I fair. mean, okay, I, it's fair. I I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with the uh, enchantments being easier to kill than creatures, but I do think the other thing Criminon is really true. Like, it's half the cost, and it's much easier to pay mm-hmm. a three mana enchantment on turn three and untap and wrath the board and stabilize and be like, what you gonna do? I draw all these cards, or to like play it later in the game for three mana and leave up something to defend yourself than it is to tap out for a six mana Sphinx and be able to defend yourself right away. So I think that for me, the mana value is the biggest difference. Like three mana is just a lot easier to leave up other things to do or it comes down so early that your opponents aren't gonna have a big enough board that someone can one shot you or the table can one shot you in one turn cycle. Because if you manage to stay alive with either of those cards you're probably gonna be able to win from the card advantage unless unless we manage to mill you out but outside of the mill amount <laughs> possibility one day you one probably day. you're probably gonna win from the card advantage so i actually did mill myself out with a consecrated <laughs> at command fest richmond tomer tomer was in that pod with me <laughs> yes i accidentally yeah. copied a consecrated sphinx and then played a notion thief Oh <laughs> no, no no no! Your opponent had a con- no no no. Yeah. Your opponent had a consecrated had a, sphinx, and you right. had a notion had a thief. Notion thief. Because consecrated yeah. sphinx is a may effect, and notion uh, thief is not a may effect. So may he effect. chose uh, every single time to draw to two cards, draw, draw, yeah, draw. and poor Krim did not have the may effect, so he could not stop drawing cards. <laughs> oh, um, so and that was a beautiful way to I die. Party. I party hard. <laughs> but that's also one more point towards consecrated things. You say mill them out. You can't. It's a mill it's a may effect. They can choose Fair. not to draw cards. But one one point to Sphinx. Sphinx ah, is yes, a good card. It. No one is denying that Sphinx is a good yeah. card. But like yeah, like again, three mana, oh. and I think it's just easier to deal with Rhystic, so people probably will just always get rid I feel of you like, or the room. I feel like and it's a little can... bit underrated. I don't know. Really? I well, I haven't run Consecrated and Sphinx in God knows how many times because I actually like I, my my main gimmick is budget decks and Sphinx. I don't remember a time the Consecrated Sphinx was less than twenty dollars. Like literally, <laughs> I, I think even when, when I started playing out. in like twenty twelve, I think it was still like at least like a ten dollar card. I don't think it's ever been like not cheap. Uh, it has ever been like super cheap. I think it's always been some some sort of price tag to it. Um, but like every single time I see it, I'm like, gosh, I, I I should be playing more consecrated sphinxes. If only it was like super budget. But like every single time I see it, it's like it does really well. Like, uh, yeah, if it if it's it's, it's easy, easier to remove, I think it comes out kind of late. But first of all, like yeah, it's a six drop. But I think it's worth being a six drop. Like if it get if you survive a turn cycle with it, you've drawn at least six cards, probably more than that, and you're in such a good position at that point. And then also, it is a creature, so there are ways of easily tutoring it up when you need it. It's very easy. It's one of the, it's the easiest card type to reanimate. So like an animate dead, a reanimate, necromancy, all those things. Put it onto the battlefield uh, for one to three mana instead of six. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential of this one, and I I, uh, I don't know. I, I think I think it's worthy of an A. I think it, 
I think it should show up in more decks than it than it than it currently does. It is like a hate target, but like it's also, also four six, six fire. That's yeah, and you don't like tapping mana. out at sorcerer speed. <laughs> not and I, get e- that. The, I, I don't. I don't even like. I'm not even talking from like. I actually only have one draw go deck. Every other deck I have is you know tap out or aggro. Sure, <laughs> but also you're in blue. Like this is like. You're going to be drawing into your Force of Will. You're going to be drawing into your Fierce Guardianship. Like, there's so many, like, cheap Swan Song. Like, even if you have one mana up, you have, like, so much counter magic that that you have access to to protect your investment. And as long as you have that investment sticking around for one turn cycle, like, then you're in, like, such a good position. I mean, I, I think you just got to build to expect people to try to kill it and kill you. So if you're playing yes. all the free counter spells and all that stuff... Then it goes up in value because uh, you know it just you gotta you gotta be prepared to turn into the arch enemy once this hits the battlefield. Yeah. So if you're playing some sort of like low powered <laughs> Sphinx Tribal might actually be an example. If you're playing like some janky like flavorful deck and you slam this, you're probably gonna get murdered and not be able to defend yourself. But if you're playing a pretty high powered deck, then this goes up well quite a bit in value because you probably can at least attempt to survive or put in a, a fight to maybe stay alive and snowball the guard advantage. I don't know. Phil, would you generally run this in a deck if you weren't worried about it being too mean or something? I generally don't because I try to have a theme, but that's our position of building a new deck every week. So if you just want to have a the most powerful deck, unless you're playing CEDH, I think then six mana is too much. But mm-hmm. if you just have one deck or two, two or three decks, and you want to make sure you win with these, I throw in a Sphinx, and I think most people do. I mean, it's expensive for a reason, besides being a mythic, I think. Uh, it's just the absolute powerhouse. Yeah, sure, you people might want to kill you, but that's a good sign for the power of a card, right? I mean... Yeah. Yeah, is it warranted the hate? I think it is. I mean, and Ow. really, we all, I mean, Krim gave it a B, which is not even a horrible ranking that's good in certain decks. Everyone else gave it A or S's. So I think, it, like, in general, we all think it's a good card. Mm-hmm. Like, it, no no one's arguing that it's, like, an, a D or something, and, like, you shouldn't ever play it. It's just a matter of, like, how, how good we rank it. True. I, I want to hear comment section on this one. Is, is it good? Are you more on on the crim side of things, or are you more on the fill side of things? Because there is like a quite the gulf here on this rating scale. Oh my goodness, we've done four cards. All right, yeah, we're uh, gonna, we got to pick up the pace a lot. We got to pick up the pace. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> Seth, Seth, tell tell us about the next card that you feel is contentious. All right, we we got one that Oof. breaks down pretty interestingly. There there's two C's here and two A's here, so there's two camps on this card, and that card is a uh, the Richard special painful truce. Uh, Richard loves his painful truce. Three mana black sorcery it has converge uh, and says you draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast painful truce. So in a three plus color deck, it's a draw three for three. Uh, pretty efficient. You got to be three plus colors really to actually be able to play it if you're uh, if if you're playing mono black or something, it's actively bad because you're not going to easily be able to converge it and get all those colors in there. We have Phil and Krim giving Painful Truths a C. Tomer and I each gave it an A. My agreement for this card is I like my harmonizes. That's a draw three for four, and I still play harmonize. This is a draw <laughs> three for three. That's super efficient. Like that's that's enough. I don't like signing bloods that are draw two for two, but drawing three that's that's enough. That's enough to get me interested. And three mana is like very cheap even for like blue cards there's not a lot of draw threes for three that's just a very efficient rate for adding three extra cards to your hand so i give it an a can't be an s because you got to be three plus colors to consider it but if you are three plus colors and in black i think this is one of the first card draw spells that i add to my decks uh, in a lot of those situations which to me makes it a pretty solid a this is kind of interesting because like i i think this card should be better every time i i I, like i always want it to be better because i love the card but in practice it always just i don't know it just doesn't do enough 
at three, like, it, it's kind of weird. Like, if I want a card draw spell, it has to, like, really chunk at, like, like give me a good grip of cards. And Painful Truths, despite Chaos Wands and things like that, <laughs> oftentimes, <laughs> just drawing three, I, it's like, it just feels like it falls a hair short. And I think that's my issue with it. It's so close. I think it's at this weird spot, if it were, like, a, like, I like Sign in Blood. I like, you know, like th- like th- that where it sits on the curve. But then just because this is awkwardly at three, I don't know why. I just, it always falls short for me. It has to do more. I don't know why. We're the opposite because I feel the same way you feel about Painful Truths, about Sign of Blood. I'm like, it just doesn't do enough. Mm-hmm. Like, draw two to add one extra card to my hand. Like, I mean, you're drawing two, but you're spending the Sign of Blood itself. So you're plus one card. Like, it's just not impactful enough. I'd rather have something that, like, adds a bigger mass of cards to my hand. So it's really interesting how we value this spot on the curve differently. Because I'm more than fine yeah. to draw three for three, but draw two for two, I would basically never play Sign of Blood. <laughs> and you're kind of the opposite. I love Sign and Blood Knight's Whisper because of two mana. Right? The two mana is perfect. It allows me to still draw, do stuff. Right? This could, like, the, the, the painful truth could allow me to then tap my mana in a different way. Well, I want max value, right? So that could knock me off of a double black spell, a double white spell, right? Who knows? Uh, double, uh, double pips in anything like that. So mm-hmm. this can be a bit demanding in some ways and i just like that a like a knight's whisper is a simple black and one or me like double black i could understand sign and blood uh but like knight's whisper i think is like just amazing i love knight's whisper so i don't know maybe that's just me because i i think three mana ee, two mana definitely great and still allows me to do a lot I think for me, like, the difference between Knight's Whisper and Painful Truths is that Knight's Whisper is, yes, it is easier to cast and stuff, and it fits in more decks. Uh, but I will see that as more of, like, a hand-smoother effect as opposed to, like, a hand-refill. Like, two two mana draw two. I, I basically replace one... I replace the Knight's Whisper, and I'm up one card. And I think that's, like, good if, like... Let's say you have a lower lane count and you're looking to like smooth out your draw a little bit or the opposite too. Like it just makes your deck a little bit more consistent at the cost of like spending some mana to do so. Whereas, you know, pay, uh, pay three, go down one card, nest two cards. I feel is like it's kind of like bolstering your hand a little bit. And so that's how that's in my brain. That's how I see the difference being. I don't know if that's well, other people feel. Um, I feel like almost like this card is is slowly becoming less good over time because we are getting more thematic and synergistic options to just perform better. But even so, like, I, if I'm a three-color plus deck, I'm just jamming Painful Truths, and it always feels good to me. Like, I've never I've never kind of regretted doing it. But would I can kind of see, this? like, getting glass good. Would you play this or read the bones? Oh, I hate this. Read the Bones. Read the Bones, I think, is... I like let's, let's talk about Read the Bones real quick. Everyone <laughs> in EGH Lorec loves this card. It's three <laughs> mana, and you're plus one card. One card. One. One. But you get but, uh, to. You know, I can pay three mana and be up one card every single turn with a Phyrexian Arena. Every turn. Why in the world would anyone ever put a Read the Bones in their deck? I don't get it. EDH Rec people, y'all. Y'all are tripping. <laughs> y'all be tripping. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, like, I don't get it. Yeah, there was a point on my list as well here. Sign and blood, read the bones. I don't get it. I guess the crim makes sense. If you want interaction and follow it up with other cheap spells, sure. But the way I play commander is ramp, play something big, then play a big draw spell to draw, redraw my hand. And there's no real place in the curve for two mana, read the bones. Or actually three mana, painful truths. They are also mm. kind of boring. They don't really synergize with your commander. I usually try to get card advantage with my commander. I mean, they're good. Three mana draw three is probably as good as you can make it before it gets super broken. Be- having no other restrictions beside three mana. If you have like a synergy card that draws, I probably play a card that is slightly worse, but synergistic. Like if a creature died this turn, you draw three cards. Probably play this. Play like, Painful Truth is just so. Oh, yeah. Three mana, draw three, read the bones, and sign and blood is even l- less exciting for me. I, 
I think I Read go. the Bones is a hair higher on my list than probably Painful Truths. They're both the same. No! Sorry, I mean, it's just go ahead. One more. <laughs> let, let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> yes, the scry. Because I value card ah! selection. Like, I do like card selection. Card. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. if I draw a bunch of blanks or a bunch of nothing, I that's the, I'd rather just not, right? Oh, cool. I'm up. Just cards. don't play the blanks. Play. But the thing here is like, what? Ha okay, so I can blindly draw three, or I scry two and go up one. So you see, you see one, one yes. additional card, but it costs you a card in your hand. That doesn't I seem worth it I, to me. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think either of these are. Worth it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you're asking, <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, okay. like, but please don't take this like where I think that read the bones is a staple, <laughs> and this is not. Like, I think both read the bones and painful truths don't work. They're mm -hmm. an awkward part of the curve. They cost just too much mana to where it doesn't matter. Draw, go, or not. Tap out. You want to play a threat. You want to follow it up with a threat, right? Like, it, like two mana wow. is like a sign in blood. I can do that and then follow it up with, like, a threat. Three mana gets a bit weird. Gets a bit weird. And so I just don't like the three mana spells we've got to draw cards with right now. Unless it's Rhystic. That, that, okay, well, that card's great. <laughs> <sighs> You gotta I, I, okay, uh -huh. go ahead. I think worry. for read the bones, one thing to to note though is we we basically pulled the most popular card draw spells from EDH Rec, and some of them some of the cards are going to be inflated just because they showed up in like Starter pre cons decks. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. so. I feel like read the bones might. Let, well, let me double check. Let me double check to see if it was uh if that's if that is the case. I might be talking out of my bum, but no, no, right, no it's been, right. it's been in a couple is, commander pre cons. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I feel like Not, that that number is going to inflate it a bit. Although they were a while ago, Sign and Blood I think is was in original Commander in 2014, Commander 2014, mm -hmm. uh, and then Read the Bones 2014 and 2017. Oh, and also I guess Dominar United, so it just came out in the new ones as well. Mm -hmm. So that does inflate it, and also I guess the other the other argument might slightly be budget. Like to me, I would much rather play Frexian yeah, Arena or another card that I think we're about to talk about, oh, Black Market yeah. Connections. I wanted uh, to hear about. For I thought you were going to mention Frexian Arena, but also I'm far that's... away from you now, so you can't beat me up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we talk about it. <laughs> but the, these cards are dirt cheap. They're commons that have been yeah. reprinted a bunch of times. So if you are budget conscious, these are like yeah. really cheap ways to add. Maybe not great card advantage, but some card advantage to your deck compared to some of the other options. If you don't want to spend 30 bucks on a Necro or, you know, whatever yeah. it costs for a Frexian Arena these days. I will only run Read the Bones if it's a budget consideration, yeah. Like, it's like 25 cents or something. You can pick it up super easy, so I just use it to fill. Yeah. Like, fill up a, a fill up a deck that it... But it's not a card that I would run if I have no budget restriction. Or even, like... Let's say I was run, making a $100 deck. I probably wouldn't even run Read the Bones at that point. It has to be cheap. You gotta uh, be on super just budget, yeah. Yeah, yep. it's just filler. But, like, Painful Truths... I, I'm kind of siding with, like, Phil here. Where I, I think, like, it's... I feel like it w used to be... Like, I used to be super high on this card. Back in the day, I'd be like, this is... Draws before 3 so super efficient. And nowadays, it's just like... And like Krim also said, it's it's doing less. I still run it. Maybe it's because I still remember it from like five years ago being like so efficient. But I do think as time goes on, it's becoming less good. And I might drop it to a B at some point. But not today. Today it stays as an A in my heart. <laughs> um, Moving on for the sake of the podcast <laughs> one hour um we got uh crim we were we, we actually alluded to this card uh what do you got for us okay so black market connections this card is a new one uh let me get up the actual like oracle text but yeah mm -hmm. okay so black market connections at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase choose one or more uh, create a treasure token, you lose life. Draw a card, you lose two life. Uh, create a 3-2 colorless shapeshifter token with changeling, you lose three life. So all in a turn, you can lose six life. But I think this card allows me to do so much. It's not just a card draw spell. We were talking a little bit earlier about Jessica's Will. I love that it is card draw at the cost of one more life than an arena. But it also has two other additional modes, right? Which could also cost me about four more life but i think the thing here is this just a lot has a lot of flexibility and allows to give me whatever i need right i think at the very least i will never say no to a treasure 
So treasure and a draw. So every turn I'm getting, I'm losing three life, but I'm getting ramp and I'm getting card draw. So I love that. If you're a tribal deck, then you can also use that body. Or the body can be relevant because you need to block or do something, right? But for sure, this is just a powerful threat. I love this. I, there's a reason why I have this at an S. Uh, Seth, I believe, has it an S. Uh, I think we've all got an S, right? No, wait. Every, uh, there's, a couple, ev- everyone... there's a couple A's, yeah. We have S's, yeah. the rest of the crew has A's. And honestly, like... I'm almost wondering if I should put it at an A. So I haven't got to play with this card a ton. Just mm-hmm. because it's not on Magic Online. I did get to play with it when we battled pre-cons at Richmond. Oh, sorry, and sorry. I pretty much just killed myself by taking six a turn. Uh, and the amount, of, the amount of damage does really okay. add up with this card. Seth, yeah. no, 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 no. So, hold so on, hold on. You, <laughs> you irresponsibly took six every time. You, you, <laughs> can't, you can't play Black the value, Magic Connections though. and not take six. What are you passing up all this value? <laughs> That's like I'm running totally a like Sylvan like... Library and not taking eight each time. Like, come on. So I, yeah, all I would but... say is, I think you want to have some life gain to get back, which is very easy to do in black, but I think you want to just keep in mind. I think the same is true to a lesser extent with Fraxine Arena, which I also really like and have as an S. I play both of them in all my black decks. Um, <laughs> but... I think that you do need to keep that in mind in your deck building. Like, have the Grey Merchant or Exsanguinate or something to reboost your life total. Because if you don't do that, the six does really end up adding up. So that's not really a vote against the card. It's just more of, like, keep that in mind in your deck building. And I could see an argument for putting it at A. Because if you're going to be like, I'm not willing to put any life gain in my deck, then I might be a little bit skeptical of Black Market Connections. Just because the, that does add up if you're not willing to add a few life gain effects to your decks. I mm-hmm. think I think you could, but the the thing here is why this is an easy S as opposed to Phyrexian Arena. Phyrexian Arena is also double black, right? This is only one black pip. On top of that, the ramp and card draw. I think it's oh, worth it's, the life loss. Phyrexian it's Arena is trash. Loss. Like, why would you? Even... Oh my! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tomer, like, well, Tomer. <laughs> say that to my face. This one, Tomer. This one is actually yeah, yeah. like a decent one. Like, <laughs> I think this one. The is bar is so low good. for. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually, you replacing unplayable with uh, something playable. I'm honestly like curious. How do y'all put this at A's and S when you all put Fraxine Arena at like C's? Like, I would, come on now, come on I now. This is so much better. So okay, it's yes, less you do, like you... you're drawing a card every yeah. turn. Does it yeah. really downgrade that much because you can make a a silly shapeshifter that isn't relevant what? in most decks it's and a treasure token shape. which is good? The treasure okay. token is amazing. What? Okay, so it's it's ramp. It is ramp, so it's making one. It's generating one mana per turn cycle, which is very relevant. It's drawing a card, which is good. But like, if I was just if I was if I was running Black Market Connections and or even Phyrexian Arena, and all I was doing was drawing one card on every subsequent turn, that's not no. Enough. Thank you. I would just pass. I wouldn't even look at the card. I would just dump. I would. I would rather run like Read the Bones, obviously. Oh, uh, mm. like what are you talking about? Uh, I'd rather well, run Read uh, the Bones over over. Uh. Phyrexian Arena. I, I don't know. I don't However, know that one. you would rather However, draw you one get, card okay. one time than a card every turn. Yeah, oh because I got it immediately. Oh read the bones. Read the bones. You draw Tomer, two, patience. and you and you scry two, and and you do that immediately. You don't have to waste your time. Like, oh, I play Phyrexian Arena, and then I have to wait an entire turn cycle to cantrip, and I lose a life, and then I have to wait another turn cycle to 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 go up one card. Like, ugh, this is, ugh. no thank you. At least this one draws me a card, puts a, puts a, put me up a mana so I can cast a, a spell higher up or cast two spells. And then also, yeah, you're losing life, but guess what? You get a, a blocker, you know, you get to, that's kind of like getting your life back or you can, uh, like put an equipment on it or, or attack it, attack triggers and stuff like that. Like, it, it's good. I like you it. You still gotta I wait like... till the next turn. You still got the I same know. patience. That's why issue. I don't put it as an S. I'm not gonna, like, <sighs> I'm not gonna just put it jam it in every single deck, but like if I can actually get good value out of all those three, all those three uh, modes, and I have some some uh, some sort of life gain, it's good. But it's like like it's good. That's why I gave it an A. It's solid. I it's wouldn't put so it on much include. Better than good, and then though. and then Phyrexian Arena. I just want to say like Seth put that as a S. S. Uh, easy. Krim got it as a B, <laughs> and me. Uh, or sorry, Phil gave it as a B. Uh, Krim put it as a C, and I'm just going to correct mine here. There D. <laughs> D for mine. <laughs> that, I will not play for Arena, Arena is oh not my God. a D. No, okay. I will put it okay, in Devotion but... Tribal, maybe. Maybe as Devotion Tribal. I'm going to put Raid the Bones over that any day. Enchantress, any day. like Alayla can use that. But okay, anyways, the thing here Raid is... Raid the Bones I... does what Phyrexian Arena does in one turn. 
The Phyrexian Arena does in three slash four. But you're, garbage. <laughs> you're, it, but it does not. It draws you. Oh my god! It draws you two cards. It only draws you yeah, two cards. Phyrexian Arena draws you, you two cards over three turns. Are garbage. You ins- but it keeps drawing for the rest of the game. Oh How my long goodness. is the game gonna go, Seth? Where it's a three mana like spell. Seven? It's a three mana spell. That's so it's bad. Gonna <laughs> Uh, so I don't know how you can think that Arena is like a D in Black Market Connections is an A or an S. Like that just that like blows my mind. It blows my creature. mind. It's the same. Like the the issues that you have with it are the same though. Like the the same pacing, the same having to wait. Like I don't know how one of those can be marked down so drastically for functioning the same exact way. I, wow. I think Value. again, like Perturbed. once again, this this is there is a reason why Black Market Connections is an S. Because, again, how, by our criteria, we could play this in a five-color deck. It actually sure. benefits the five-color deck. It also fixes the colors that you may be Multicolor, off. Multicolor, man, yeah. Dude, I play Phyrexian right. Arena in five-color decks. Okay, but, but for Phyrexian Arena does <laughs> – yeah. and yeah, it fits in tribal decks, right? Even better. That's not tribal, even a joke. Tribal. It, it's, That's yeah, true. Tribal, 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 sure. Hello. So, yeah. but, like, but, like, Arena only draws you that one card and very slowly. Right, so, so there is slow. a difference. It doesn't fix your mana. Now, I would play Arena over Read the Bones and Painful Truths, so I agree with that. Well, I don't know what Tomer's talking about over there with it being at the bottom, but like, <laughs> but I will say though that like the difference between a Phyrexian Arena and this card is absurd. Like it is absurd. I'm with Krim on I, that. Except, well, I'm with Krim on the last part he said, but not the former part. I'm gonna <laughs> run Read the Bones over Phyrexian Arena any day, any day. For budget concerns, is that for or budget? just like I power mean, level? Forex and no Arena bu- even <laughs> doesn't even make the budget because there's enough people who are wrong at Magic that I don't think it's ever dropped like under ten dollars. Like what? what, what, what <laughs> it's nine dollars still. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Play what? it, people try at home. It. What are you doing? <laughs> try playing it, Tomer. Just try. I've it. Been I Richard. Saying- Richard was with you, and then he actually put it in his decks, and now he he's with me. So just play it, and it will win you over. I'm telling you. I've been just saying like, that this card is trash since I started playing Commander over a decade ago. I thought wow. there were ten times better how, options. How does a it feel to be wrong for nine dollars? How does it feel to be wrong for a whole decade? I don't know if I've ever <laughs> experienced that. <laughs> Leave a comment down. <laughs> I mean, like for Exit Arena, it's still like really good. I don't know. Or if oh. you're right, I'm not sure. <laughs> we you have to probably... wait three turns to draw two cards, said Three <laughs> turns for three mana. If this was like one mana, I'd be like, all right, I get it. I get it. It, it keeps adding <laughs> up. Three. It keeps adding up every turn. <laughs> every turn, the fourth like, third. You have to uh, wait one turn. You have to wait until your second turn that this sport thing's on the battlefield for you to can trip with this for three mana. Just... Just think of uh, and then it's turn three it's a divination it's a suspend two divination for three man oh, turn five oh, okay i i <clears throat> five that you would get garbage second card so so if the combination garbage. of card drawing and ramping is so powerful and that makes black market connections like an all-star by it's that also would, a tribal deck that would also yes. mean that heater and archive is s tier correct <laughs> What? For what? For it, for it, black it, market connections. It ramps, and draws, it ramps and draws cards. Basically no, the same. No, it doesn't. It ramps no, no, no. or draws well, yeah, cards. Yeah, ramps or draws cards. But you don't There's lose any life. It so no, no life is poorly. Oh, no yeah, life is lost. Oh, How do you make a fair? It doesn't do both. It you either don't? ramps or it draws cards. It doesn't do both. And it does both terribly. You, you get two, two mana right aspect. away. You don't got to wait a whole a whole turn, which was a big you issue with Phyrexian Arena. <laughs> you spent four for it. Oh, you spent four. That's so pretty brutal. This, and Black then you Market's spent an additional mana? two like, to draw your two cards. You spent six <laughs> mana to draw two cards. Oh, yeah. Garbage tier. Okay. Trash okay. liar tier. <laughs> It's not great. Oh. It's not great. All right, what, oh what's what's next? We we got super God. super derailed. <laughs> All right. Phil, well, we knocked please. out two cards with that. I think so. we just talk yeah, about this is like good. the black. We're just talking about black cards on this podcast. Just spoiler. Yeah, I noticed this. Yeah, we well. actually yeah, we yeah, have had we? Those actually. Are, like, yeah. What? I have a non-black card. I'm actually like like oh okay okay Very okay cute. we'll get to it soon, Phil. Yeah. We we got we'll, okay. We'll, we'll do one more black card and we'll mix it up. One of the most <laughs> blackest cards to draw cards here, uh, and one I put in probably every black deck. 
Uh, it's Decree of Pain. Eight mana. That's a cheap one. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. And you can cycle it for five mana. Draw a card and every creature gets minus two, minus two. You can do that at instant speed. But I usually try to get it up to eight mana. Wipe the board. Draw 12 cards or something. And everybody said... Oh, that mm -hmm. turns the corner. Like, if any card is good at getting you back into the game, oh my. I mean, it's eight mana, sure, but... It's true. Just do some rampant... A lot of mana. It's also I... good later in the game. You don't, don't, wouldn't even want to cast it on turn five. You probably would. Well... But I, I usually, when it comes time that this really clutches you out of a sticky situation, you... I eight mana a lot. But I ramp a lot. Is it so. on our list? Did we even? It is. This it's one? Yeah. forty forty oh, yeah. one. We have. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phil, oh, there Phil, it is. and Phil huh? and Krim. Phil and Krim gave it A's. Tomer and I gave it B's. And this, for me, if we had done this podcast like a few years ago, S tier easy. This was the first card mm -hmm. I added to basically every single deck I built. Mm -hmm. I play it a lot less now. Now I only play an index where I'm actually ramping pretty heavily and getting up to eight mana. We've just gotten so many wraths printed that are so cheap and so efficient that I found myself just like cutting this one more and more just because it costs eight mana. Feels a hundred percent right about what it does. Like we talk about consecrated sphinx, one of the downsides being you play that and then you get killed, uh, even though you're gonna draw all these cards. This kind of solves that whole issue because you're wrathing the board. So even though you're going to have a handful of cards, your opponents aren't likely going to be able to just be like, oh, look at all those cards. We got to like take them out. What are they going to do? They don't have any creatures. You just wrath them. But I've just found it to be a, a little bit expensive for some of the decks that I play these days. Uh, especially maybe it's playing with Krim 2 and like having counter spells floating around. There's nothing worse than tapping out for eight mana only to have it get like hit by a swan song or a mana drain. Oh my God, mana drain. Like something like that is just like so brutal. So I've started to skew towards more efficient RAS, but it's certainly powerful if you can resolve it and if you can ramp into it. It's not only just like counter spells we're talking like protection spells like a like a teferi's protection Ooh, or whatever yeah. give your team indestructible right like i can understand the fear in it but like when this goes through it is unbelievably advantageous for the caster like it yep. is absurd and i think that is True. why it's eight mana and i think that's why i still have it at an a just because i know it's eight mana but that's because if it were any less it'd be kind of silly um and and this card doesn't care if it's a token or not it just cares that it died so like this card just i i think there it's it's like the number four blackboard wipe right like this is if i can play a blackboard wipe i'm i'm probably gonna want this somewhere it's just so good it does everything you want it cleans the board and reloads this is why I can also play it in an, a, a black-based aggro deck or anything like that. Sweep my own board, whatever, who cares? Draw a ton of cards. Eight mana. I, I, eight, I mana is, eight mana is a real cost, but it's also yeah. absurd for eight mana. You like, can like, also cycle it. Like, if there are sure. small, small creatures, like you're against a token yeah. deck or something like that, you can cycle it at instant speed, which is nice. But, like, yeah, it's like that. I think it's still worth as a top end, but I do just run it less. I think the reason why I run it less, though, is not because eight mana is so much, but rather I think a lot of a lot of archetypes are getting more and more asymmetrical board wipes these days. That they just it starts taking out a spot. So, for example, most tribes will have at least one board wipe that will destroy stuff that's not your board. For example, uh, vampires recently got like Olivia's something Olivia's something wrath. where yeah. non-vampire creatures get negative X, negative X. Um, there's obviously like for dragons, there's destroying non-dragon creatures. There's at least two for giants. Like, I don't know. I guess giants <laughs> are not that popular. Battle of Frost but... and Fire. Yeah. And then isn't there so, kindred something that dominance. doesn't for any kindred tribe Kindred dominance want. for any type of creature. Um, in even artifacts, like there's like destroy all non artifact creatures, non token, um, so, yeah, yeah, non tokens or power X or higher than that and stuff like that. So the more of those appear, those are going to be pro high priority in any deck that I run that can run them because I think those are just like the best for for those decks because if it doesn't touch your board state but it touches my opponent's board state, that's fantastic. 
So, and then there's like stuff that's more flexible, like farewell, where like you, it's exile and it gets rid of, it can get rid, rid of the creatures like the Kree does, but it also will get rid of artifacts if you need them or enchantments if you need them or graveyards if you need them. So I feel like the Kree is getting slowly a little bit less good these days. It's always good, but I, I do run it in less text now, but I still think it is very good. Like you it, just it by no hand. means is your number one board wipe, but you would still yeah. play Olivia's Wrath or whatever the destroy all non tokens, whatever, right? You'd still mm-hmm. play that. That could be your number one, yeah. but it's still good to have this as your number two or number three. Or four. but really though, like if you're in Rakdos, you got like Blasphemous Act, you got Toxic sure, Deluge, yes. you got Olivia's Wrath. Like you're, well, there's well, a if pretty you're vampires. That's if you're a huge yeah, asterisk. if you're building the vampire yeah. deck, but like. Uh, is that maybe it's like five or six? Maybe if you play a Krim amount of Wraths. <laughs> the card draw is, uh, no, the card the, draw is it, good. I mean, it On kind average. of wraps the board, but the card draw is absurd. Mm. Like, yeah, right. I can destroy the board pretty easily with like Toxic Deluge, but I don't draw 20 cards with this. And yeah, still eight mana. That's true. That's but true. Damn. Like, we've I mean, seen some pretty big decree of pains in Commander Clash. <laughs> I mean, we've all. To be fair, we've also seen Phil die with it in hand, not getting to eight mana on Commander Clash. So I was close. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen the good, the good and the bad of of Decree. Maybe I'm underrating a little bit at B. Maybe it should be an A. But I don't know. My experience has been similar to Tomer's, where I love the card. I just I don't play it as much as I used to. I still play it sometimes, though. Maybe I should run it more often. But yeah, yeah I'm maybe, like I'm like B plus A. Too. But like, yeah, I, I have run I'll, it less. I'll bump it up to an A. That's uh, it's close enough. I'll give it an A. You, you convince me. All I right, do like all right. Cards. It's across the board. I'll we'll give it an A too. I think it's still <laughs> good. Hey. All right, you convinced me. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so uh, let's let's move on then. Um, does me? Oh, I have a black card too. We've only done cards. one. Yeah, Tomer's only done one. Except I think everyone me. else yeah, has done two. Yeah, we haven't even gone through our second row. <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> Woo! Um. All right. Uh, Siphon Mind, fellas. What do you think about Siphon Mind? I'm just gonna type it in because I forgot. Well, I, okay, it's three in a black, so four mana sorcery. Each other player discards a card. You draw a card for each card discarded this way. Um. I looking at the. Looking at the ratings is why I thought this is worthy of discussion. Uh, Seth has it high, high said S. Um, Phil and I have it as A. Krim has it as C. And I was like, this card is like Sorcerer's one of the speed. best. Sorcerer's one of the speed. best. Yeah, it is. it's I a mean, D for I, Krim because it's yeah, not an instant. Solved it. You solved <laughs> no, it. no, but it's like, just. A, hear me out. What if? What if? Regardless of instant or sorcery, it's just not good anymore in 2022. It, <laughs> I think it's six it's, for it's one, one of the best generic card draw spells in the format because it basically in a four player game, your opponents are draw are discarding one card and you're drawing three. So you why would you don't care about your opponents losing cards? No, no, what? no, no. That the opponent discarding, they are discarding yeah. a card they care least about. Right, but they're still discarding a card that they put into their deck. Sure. Like, I think it, they, they, they care at least about it for that moment, but it's still going, it still hurts. So you're Does basically it? netting six cards for oh. four mana, which is really good. Six cards. I don't know, dude. For like four mana, I'm, get, I'm letting each opponent choose their worst card. Yeah. And then I draw three cards. But what right? it, what, they could have like three really good cards in their hand and you made them discard one of them. So they didn't they, not, they don't want to discard cards, is what I'm trying to say. Sure. They're they're Nobody getting hurt. Wants. They're well, getting but then hurt. Again, actually, I don't know about that. Some decks do want to discard cards. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but uh, how, yeah. don't act like don't don't sigh and shrug that off like that we aren't reanimating and like, oh, <laughs> did something go in the graveyard? Ah <laughs> But that doesn't happen that often. Sure. You get burned, it happens like... more often than you would think. Okay. Like, I'm sorry, Siphon Mind is just Okay, I'm not gonna go as far as to say that like, you know, like like read the bones is better or something like that, because it's not. But but like if I'm it's not better okay. than Phyrexian Arena, please. It, uh, okay, I, um, okay. I'm not even gonna, I'm, no, Phyrexian Arena is better than this card. It's, because, uh, all right, all right. Anyways, I don't like that the Painful Truths is at an awkward spot on the curve, right? Three mana, read the most. 
There is no way I'm going to like a four mana card that is, is like, what? Unless I am specifically a Tiny Bones deck or a discard deck, mm -hmm. I do not want this. Okay. It just feels so good to resolve. I, I mean, I get your point. It's not too much impact, especially for you who didn't have to discard cards. But it just feels like so much impact for four I mana. Feel like... I mean, four mana, is, is, to be fair, is kind of mid-rangey. But I feel like the card is just super fun. It just feels like you're doing a lot while drawing cards. That's the know, illusion just... of what you think is happening here. What? <laughs> you think I mean, you're doing... If okay. I am, I am casting a Raven's Crime on you. <laughs> Whoa. And I you draw three four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's a harmonize. Three. It's harmonize. You're, You're drawing three cards. Like discard, discard, like, discount the discard altogether. Pretend that didn't even exist. People play ambitions cost, and that costs you life. That's four mana. <laughs> draw that three, lose also three. Also bad. <laughs> but I'm saying this doesn't even cost you life, and your opponent's discarding yeah. cards. Like I don't know how. I don't think the discard is like super necessary to make it good. Like it, it helps. It is a six for one, but like. Four mana draw three with no pain is like that's kind of the going right in black, and then you just get the discard is like a bonus almost. Assuming that they discard right, because like this is like this card is terrible, like top decked, the, right? Like late who game has zero cards in hand in commander. Late game, people will jam everything they have unless they're a control deck. You maybe you get the control player, but I would rather have an ambitions cost where if I draw that late, I can just guarantee draw me three. Sure. I feel, I feel like the, the this, situation this card, where it was bad are pretty rare. I was, I don't know. Do these things happen a lot? Like, is this actually like a something we should be worried about? The like, oh, they might be reanimating, or oh, they might not have cards in hand. Like, is that something that actually is going to happen? Hate, can... <laughs> you hate my favorite sword for that exact <laughs> reason. <laughs> But it's not card disadvantage oh, if you just mill. Yeah, no, it's just directly. It's, it's not even like putting them down a card in hand. Like if it was, if it was making the discard cards, I'd be all all for it. <laughs> making them discard. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Like I I am not a fan of this. This card is so wow. bad. Like it is so Ooh. slow. It Nine times like, if you siphon mind me. I'm like I, it hurts. I'm usually discarding a land, and then like two turns later, I miss a land drop. Yeah. And, like. Damn. Richard yeah. siphon minded us all the time, and I would always. Just and be it's like, always oh. value, like, yeah. it's... and I'm just always like, okay, <laughs> okay. So wow. how many they times just... do you like? I discard Avison, and then I immediately reanimate it or something. Like, okay, it could happen <laughs> I'm, theoretically, I'm but it's like it's it's first off, it's not that unpro like unlikely as you think it is. <laughs> Second off, even if it's not that exact corner pocket situation. <laughs> I still don't care. Like, I, this card is just not good on the curve. Why Damn. do you not understand that? This card is... Tomer, how is do you this play for better than a Phyrexian yes. Arena? Okay. So the thing like, is... Oh, my God. You ever compare it to Phyrexian Arena? This Stop cross three comparing on one things turn. to this. It's, the thing is, you said it's bad on curve, but usually I don't play card draw on curve. I play it when I played my other cards, so I wouldn't play... Sign in blood on two. Well, now I'm comparing stuff to sign in blood, <laughs> but uh, actually, well, the thing is, siphon mind just feels play like sign in blood at any point. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this one it makes actually makes a lot of sense on turn four because it's this. I you're gonna I play some know, ram spells. You're gonna to be get... down in a couple Kill cards and you refill. Four it's mana so mana good. Mana. Oh I my god, it's so good! Die. Wow, it Wait like you... pains Wait. me. <laughs> To see Wait, that there is a four mana do nothing. If, if this was an instant nothing. speed, you know, Krim would like mark it like S plus plus the best. Oh, this for instant speed, speed? Yeah. ten oh, out yeah. of ten, yeah. best card don't, in the game. Don't act, don't act like if I upkeep you, uh, upkeep cast this when you're hell bent that that's not cracked. That's way better than this sorcery. Sure, it's speed better doo -doo. because sometimes like, somebody can have no cards in hand, but I don't even remember the times. Like, there would be, like, I, okay, I want to okay. cast Siphon Mind, nobody's Hellbent. Like, if you're Hellbent, you already lost the game, you might as well concede. Not Just, like, true, because get the out, thing GG. here, first off, the decks that play this should be focusing on getting you Hellbent. Then we're talking. <laughs> Just you're telling game. me in a deck Wait, that is, just, if it plays on. black mana, if there is a deck that is playing black mana, you would play this. Like, it is like your I one put random it in, Yeah, I wouldn't put spell. it in all decks. It's not an S, but I would put it in most decks. Yeah, I would just jam it. 
I'd be like, yeah, and it's Whoa! good. Whoa! It looks like it's one. It's one black <laughs> clip. It's so splashable. You can use your just does... will man on it even. <laughs> I I would so play this in any deck. And so oh I. Oh my god! It's so good. You, it, you all are lucky that this podcast is running long and we're not going to get through many more cards because uh, your heads would explode when you see that most of my decks still play Harmonize, which is <laughs> literally just four mana draw three, no upside, no absolutely. anything. <laughs> I, I still the year of, jam it. In the year <laughs> the of Artoski 2022, <laughs> you still run Harmonize, please. <laughs> Please, <laughs> so if I'm uh, running Harmonize, over for an arena at least, I, though. I, if I'm running Harmonize, though, I obviously love Siphon Mind. Like, that's yeah. <laughs> it makes you discard and it harmonizes. Why would I not? Oh my god. god. Uh. <laughs> Krim just doesn't love, believe. Uh, Krim's card draw has to be two mana or five plus mana. In between, no go. Doesn't matter. Doesn't instant. matter what it does. And instant. Unless it's the Kree of But it has to it. draw. Wait, no, he doesn't. Never mind. Cards. <laughs> it has to draw bulks of cards. Right. This does not draw a bulk of cards. This draws. <laughs> Three. Three is good. How much is a bulk? How, ma- how much counts for as a bulk? I'm curious. Mana, it draws how much is that in, 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 uh, in Fahrenheit? Yes. System. How much yeah, is in Fahrenheit? In, yeah, is that Fahrenheit in or Fahrenheit, Celsius, okay. Grim? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this is not the How hot, hot this, or this cold is, is this? This is not a heater. This is a very cold. This is a, a Boston winter. This is a, like, this is very far <laughs> from anything even a heater. Holy cow, this is cold. <laughs> Like it is bad, dude. It is bad. Oh, it is like man. actively bad. No, dude. It's a six for one though. So no, no so I good. Can't. Six for one. Yes. Oh, okay. If I were wow. trolling, sure. All right. All right. This, this is S. This is S. This is a great card. <laughs> we we got it. Like we want him over. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. We were trolling. Troll card. Okay. Okay. This card is sick. This card is sick. <laughs> But the okay. magic player in me tells me this card is god awful. Oh, boy. <laughs> Doo-doo water. <laughs> do we want to keep going? We're like an hour and a half. Or do yeah. we end the I mean, eight cards? We've pretty much covered. We talked about some of the extra ones. We talked got some blood the in there. Cards. Do we want to talk about Esper think, Sentinel? I think we should talk about a non-black card. We can end just, with Esper yeah, Sentinel. Just, uh, Although I think we all agree on it, don't we? I'm pretty sure we all. We not? Oh, except for Crim. Crim does not Krim agree on it. Crim hates this card. All right. I don't hate this card. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than siphon <laughs> all right we're gonna we're gonna talk about one more card and it's a non-black card just for the sake of of of, of changing things up for a little bit and this is a card that a lot of us like but crim actively despises so take it away i do crim. not despise <laughs> this card esper sentinel i know i know i'm gonna just start with that right now esper yep. sentinel Yep. Whenever an opponent casts their first not creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, where X is its power. Okay, oh, this is that. obviously a sweet magic card. It's one mana, and it's an artifact, right? So that means you can get it with Urza Saga. Everybody does that. Uh, but, like, yeah, everyone has this rated essentially at, what, an S? I think hey. everyone's got this at an S, except eh. for me. Okay. Everybody oh. got an A, right? Oh. Everybody Phil's got, A's got, A's got, A's got, A's got an A. Phil's got an A. Like Seth's an S. Tomer's an S. I'm yeah. at a B. Because this is only in specific decks. I see people jamming this in like <laughs> random other decks that just... Yeah, like, like, What's... like, bro, hold on. What? This is good in an artifact it's so deck. so good. In a human deck. A human deck and like maybe an artifact deck. Just something that you can get with Urza Saga shirt, whatever, right? But like you can't. so many times... Yeah. Oh, you can't. Edi- then even editors worse. Now try it. <laughs> you can get it, it with trinket mage. Worse. Oh you can my get it with god. Trinket mage. Wait. Okay, okay. So why? Okay. Why do you think you wouldn't play this in any deck? Like, does didn't we do the math on this? Didn't we have like several stats episodes where it's like, oh, every time someone plays this, they draw five cards for one mana, or like some ridiculous number. No, like, Seth, how every, how is that possibly bad if that's what the actual time. math says? <laughs> Every time you're in the pod, somebody draws five cards. <laughs> no, that there is no, a I, difference, Seth. <laughs> okay, I played this card in the wild. I still see it be like an ancestral recall in white. Like it's still what? good. 
I feel like every time I see yeah. this card in the wild, every time it's, I play this card. Especially if it's like one, turn one. If it's turn one, I can't tell you the amount of times like I was at GP Richmond or just anywhere where like you play a turn one S for Sentinel and the next person's like, well, I'm not not going to cast my rampant growth on curve and they just cast a no, rampant growth or a signal into it. I know that's wrong. wrong. And that's that wasn't what, even me. That's how me. people do it. Like, that's, it's, that's what people do. It. Think about this. What about the yeah. last season, right? That I was on. Phil was playing the Shroom deck. Phil had a turn one Esper Sentinel. He did not draw a damn single card until he like, did turn because Richard was cast table. into it after oh, yeah. shaming until... the rest of the table. Not <laughs> no, doing no, it. he drew it way later because I remember and I chuckled like and like unbelievably when Phil's like, "Are you all really not gonna let me draw any cards with this?" And... I mean, I text the table though. Like I didn't. Yeah, I delayed, That's why I don't I play the. I delayed my card game plan anymore. like two full turn cycles just because I was trying to pay the one for each. And even then, like he had, he like copied the Esper Sentinel at some point. And it was nonsense. Yes. And I like remember there were like three Esper Sentinel in the battle. Like I did allow one card draw or two, maybe even sure. to go through after the game. And Richard just wasn't like he was just like he was also deflecting at the same time. He would be like you know talking about like oh look at that threat, and then he meanwhile like cast into it, not pay the one and stuff. And he's like yeah, he still got cards off of it. Even In even Richard's with all those big defense, he was mana screwed though. Oh okay, whatever, whatever defense you want. No, I, no, I no, never, like, I also okay, want to curve point, out. In my defense, I want to curve Seth, out. Seth just like kick no, flips no. and willy nilly goes right in. Oh whatever, <laughs> let's go. What if you what if you cast a card draw spell and you're gonna cast another spell <laughs> after that? In, okay. in, in my defense, I might need that mana, Grim. You might <laughs> need that mana. I don't know what you're gonna draw. Okay, Who knows? Seth, okay, okay. But seriously be, though, what if your finger I being, slips? I I I am being okay. I don't think the card is bad. I don't think the card is bad. I think it's fine. I think it's a very good card, but I think it's only good in specific card decks, right? I don't think that if it just if I have white mana, I'm playing this. I think you should like, say it's only good if you play it on turn one. I think that's the biggest factor, even, which you can't really yeah. control. But R- sure, I mean, yeah. it's good in humans, sure, but it's also good in mono white griffins as long as it's turn one. And yeah, people paid for it. And I just well, no, but, the but table, like, which is why I don't play it anymore. Yeah. But that was humans, pretty powerful. Humans is anyways. a real card because oh, it sure, benefits because from, the, from the anthems, them, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, like it actually becomes a real cost. I'm talking about I, I am playing mono white griffins, right? And, and like, oh, okay, I'm playing mono white griffins. I, I don't know if this card actually does anything unless it's on turn one. It has to be on turn one. Otherwise, it's just like, yo, that's... Okay, cool. You got We've seen the stat. Even if you play it on turn five, you're drawing at least three cards off it. No, 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 no. no. I mean, no, 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 where's your, where is your, where is your, where is your paradise make believe play group where everybody actually pays the one as a responsible hashtag gamer? Paradise I've been at CDH believe- tables where they don't even pay the well, one for an S percent. CDH Sentinel. tables can't pay the one. That's they because that's the, the problem. They, they don't it, have the mana to pay the yeah, one. They it's like, like oh, on and these are the people who are like playing to win and all that stuff, and they still get it wrong. Like, yeah, no, I don't, or maybe I don't know where this this paradise is that people pay are responsible taxpayers. Or 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 big brain. Maybe it's all of you that are wrong, and I've been right, and the the CDH players have been right all the time. Maybe maybe y'all need to just stop paying the one, the and I've been ahead of the curve. Maybe. But really, maybe our stats brace the lose. Our stats say the average is it draws three cards. We did stats for a whole season. On average, it drew three cards in games where it showed up. It costs a single mana. I think if you draw two cards off of it, you came out ahead for one mana in white. So it's hard for me to see how this is like, yeah, maybe it's not going to draw you 12 cards every game or six cards every game, but it doesn't have to to be worthwhile. Like, it's got a body. If it draws you a couple cards, it's white, a card that a color that is traditionally struggled with card advantage. So... I don't know. I think you can jam this in literally any Struggled archetype and get a while get, ago. Yes, in a long, a long time ago. Yes, it struggles less because of cards like because Esper, it has Esper Sentinel. Sentinel. Yeah. I was okay, say that. but like, is I don't know if Esper Sentinel is what's like. I, okay, Esper Sentinel is a good card. Again, I will state this, but it is not every deck good. <laughs> How is this every deck good? I just want to put it in like a five color deck because it might be so, too difficult to jam in turn one, but like. So is Ancestral it's Recall good. not every deck good? Because drawing three for... <laughs> is the argument that drawing three for one is just not good at magic? Is that is that no, no, is no. that where we're at? 
in the Celestial Creature, Recall, so it's even better. Is guaranteed and to draw me three cards at instant <laughs> speed. First off, second off, this card is just going to sit. Like I feel that every time. Not even I feel. I see that this card often. <laughs> I, like I draw it. Like turn five, I play it. My opponents draw it. Like turn seven, they play. It. It, unless it is turn one. This card is just not doing like like it's not like it's a bad card. It's just not S tier. That's all I'm saying. It and does drop off, but great. like if I play a turn three Asper Sentinel, I'm still very happy. I'm gonna Am get my I? value. Turn five, it's gonna get a little bit dicey. Turn seven, yeah, it's not gonna do too well. Although we did have like a weird stat where it was like we played a turn ten and we drew like six cards or something like that because people just like stopped caring or something. Yeah. Um <laughs> they were like, too lazy yeah. to pay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think this card is good. And then obviously its ceiling is much higher, right? Because if you can pump its power, then the tax there. becomes unplayable. That. Like, so yeah, humans equipment decks. You put a sword Stats, on it, you or pay, I mean, tax decks, three. humans decks. Voltron yeah, any way decks. to pump yeah. it. Yeah, but like even without, I don't even care. Like if I'm in an Azorius deck, like I'm, I would. You need to give me a very good reason not to run this in like. An Azorius deck. I would just jam any two color deck. I will one hundred percent jam this. Any three color deck. I will one hundred percent jam this. Four and five. I'm like oh, maybe I won't. But like you have to give me a reason not to run this card. I think it's in blue so and good. white. I would not play this when Mystic Remora exists. I would pay the one on cumulative upkeep, <laughs> and and know that I for sure am slowing down the table. Like like ain't but nobody you're slowing yourself it. down too. That's the difference between Mystic yes. Remora and you. You're paying a White. cumulative upkeep. <laughs> Perfect. My decks are like any like in blue and white. I I guarantee you, you're not aggro. <laughs> like like you are not that fast. <laughs> I've tried to build a hyper aggro blue white deck. It doesn't work. Uh, so when I say hyper aggro, I mean like closes quickly. You're a stacks deck or you're you're like whatever. The point here is if you're a tax deck or something like that. Okay, sure. You're a, you're you're taxing the mana base, so it is actually hard to pay the one. But if you're just like a random hippogriff deck, I don't, I don't understand why you're jamming this card. This card's so good. It's pretty what? good, yeah. <laughs> I think it's that weird. Play it in every deck. <laughs> Krim, Krim hates Ancestral Recall. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This card is so <laughs> overrated. Oh my god! It is a bit overrated. I give you that. Yeah, it it uh, doesn't read hey draw a card every turn because it triggers just once and it only triggers off non creature. <laughs> Still, though, Ancestral Recall is a uh, pretty... This is not Ancestral Recall. I know, I know. Stop calling it that. That is not the same card. <laughs> it's better than Ancestral Recall. Yeah, no! Right. <laughs> yeah, can your no, Ancestral Recall attack? <laughs> yeah, can, can your no, can your Ancestral can. Recall equip a sort of, of a Fire and Ice? I don't Shanks. think so. Okay. Wait, we gotta, we gotta put it in Crim so. terms. Crim, sort of body Dude. and mind. Body oh, and yo, mind. First off. First off. <laughs> Sword of Body and Mind is no. a saint. Don't you dare talk ill on Sword of oh. Body. Second you can make off, make a wolf token. Wow. <laughs> second off, yo, Ancestral Recall draws me cards. This does not always do that. This one Wait, is amazing. It's, just not a, it's not enough. It's just but okay. what if the opponent has it's like hard. a Naset and you can only draw in increments of one? Then Ancestral Perfect. Recall is worse, huh? Well, and yeah. this recall could respond to that on the stack and just draw sure. for one and get my three then. <laughs> it's bad. Or I wait. So. What's a better yeah, top deck banned. though? Ask for Sentinel. For, easy. D- no, no, it's not. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> which which can I find off Trinket Mage? Ask for Sentinel. Easy. Okay, <laughs> fair. I'll, you win there. <laughs> <laughs> get it back with Sun Titan. Easy. Okay, fair. That's I'll actually, admit that. Yeah. I'll admit that. Okay, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Your opponent will now be not even inconvenienced again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, yes, okay. All right, leave a comment down below. Uh, what do you think is better, Ancestral Recall or S for Sentinel? <laughs> That's not a real question. That would be a real question. <laughs> we'll find out together, Crib. We'll find out together. Um, all right, <laughs> Uh, we're going to call it here. We we got nine cards, which is less than we expected. But I think the reason why we had only nine is because we chose the ones that we thought were the most controversial ones that we could talk about. And I think Mission is su- successful because we did talk a lot about them. So, um, again, we have the entire ranking 
that's going to be linked in the MTG Goldfish article, and it's also going to be linked in the YouTube section. I'm probably going to pin it, put it in the video description as well there. Um, so if you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes or wherever, you can just head on over to mtggoldfish.com, find the article, and uh, it will be there. All right, that's our show, everybody. We'll be back next week as usual with a new topic. We don't know what it's going to be yet. We're going to be, to be announced. Um, and then, yeah, uh, thanks for watching slash listening. Until next time, friends. See ya.